Jordan once purchased about 400 used Challenger 1 main battle tanks from the United Kingdom. When these tanks arrived in the hands of the Jordanian military, their overall condition was still relatively good. However, they faced a slightly awkward problem, which was that the tanks were equipped with the L11 120mm rifled gun, which was too specialized. Jordan could only purchase ammunition from the UK, which meant that their fate was in someone else's hands. If they lost their ammunition source in the future, the tanks would become a pile of scrap metal. In order to maintain the combat capability of the tanks, King Abdullah II of Jordan's Design and Development Bureau collaborated with Switzerland to jointly develop the Falcon turret to accommodate a 120mm smoothbore gun. The reason for redesigning a new turret is that the original Challenger 1 turret had limited space for modification, and the gun carriage could not accommodate a Western 50 caliber 120mm smoothbore gun. However, installing a long-barreled 120mm smoothbore gun is the development trend, and currently, most main battle tanks are equipped with this type of gun. The Falcon turret is a very narrow and elongated turret, only about 1.4 meters wide. The frontal armor still has a wedge-shaped structure, but the width is only about one-third of the original Challenger 1 turret. However, the armor protection does not seem to have weakened, and the front armor module can be replaced, which is conducive to future armor upgrades. The main gun is an L50 120mm smoothbore gun, which is designed and manufactured in Switzerland, and is slightly better than the Rheinmetall gun. It is said that after installing a muzzle brake, the ammunition dispersion is one of the best among current gun models. The gun can use NATO standard ammunition which allows for future ammunition sources to be expanded. The gun is equipped with an automatic loader, which has a structure similar to the automatic loading structure of a French oscillating turret. There are left and right ammunition drums at the rear of the gun, which can achieve a firing rate of eight rounds per minute. When firing in bursts, it can fire three rounds in the first 10 seconds. There are 11 rounds of ammunition available in the turret for immediate use, with an additional 17 rounds of reserve ammunition. The secondary weapon is a 7.6 Metulemer coaxial machine gun, and there are also one group of 8-tube 66 Minar smoke grenade launchers on each side of the narrow turret. The turret is equipped with a thermal imaging device and fire control system developed by LIW Company. There is an independent commander's observation device above the turret, and the gunner's aiming device is on the left side of the turret. Both the commander and gunner's aiming devices have automatic tracking capabilities. The gun is equipped with a stabilizing system, and the turret is driven by electricity, making it flexible in response. The turret has an overpressure three defense system and an automatic fire extinguishing system. Although this is a manned turret, the personnel operate below the turret. When the tank is equipped with the turret, the personnel are actually sitting inside the vehicle, making it more like an unmanned turret. By relying on the compact front of the turret, the frontal projection area of the tank can be reduced to improve survivability, and having all crew members inside the hull can also improve their survival rate. From a technical perspective, the Falcon turret is indeed advanced enough, but perhaps it is too advanced to the point where many concepts go beyond existing tanks. Equipping such a turret will bring a lot of logistical burdens. For a country like Jordan, it is a risky move to equip it. Even if there are no reliability issues, this highly integrated turret requires logistics units to spend a lot of time, manpower, and resources to adapt to it. Although Jordan is a wealthy country, its national size is ultimately small, and it is difficult to bear such a technological change alone. The cost-effectiveness of retrofitting only 400 tanks in the country is very low. If there is economic and technological strength to complete this retrofit, it would be better to develop a new tank.